And, and it's funny, I have a, a friend of mine who, who has the same initials that I have in my phone as TW, and so I, I keep thinking that I'm getting an email from TW, my, my buddy, and which was funny because um, we eventually were gonna need to cast the role of Samuel Campbell. Uh -huh. And so I kept having this TW in my head, and I was like, well, I, I have an idea. What if we just make a TW? I'm on board with that. So I got a surprise for you guys. Uh, introducing the guy playing her father, my grandfather, Samuel Campbell, Mr. Tom Welling. <laughs> What's up, buddy? Hey, how are you? This is an old Jensen's fault. I lost the bet. That's it. Which is why I'm here. Don't lose the bet to me. I'll bring you up on stage and embarrass the shit out of you. Um, <laughs> yeah. oh, this, uh, we're really, really excited to have Tom. Uh, we knew we were going to need uh, somebody to come in and somebody with uh, with the power and the strength and the, and the history, and, and obviously some of you may know that Tom and I go way back to a little show called Smallville. Coach. Coach. You can call me Grandpa now. That's right. Yep, I get to call you Poppy now. Yeah. Uh, so Tom's got to run. He's got a lot of responsibilities today, but I wanted, yeah. to, I wanted him to introduce you to the Supernatural family, my friend. Let these guys know who I am. These are probably too young. <laughs> yeah, so, so Tom was in a show called Smallville, where he played Lord Kent, a.k.a. Superman. Yeah, I'll see you guys in a couple days. Thanks for having me. All right, Tom. See you, buddy. See, see you, T-Dub. See you, T-Dub. Your father is Superman, by the way. Sorry, a little surprise for you guys. <laughs> And thanks. Good night. Good night. Um, so, what they just saw today, this episode, how close is it to the idea that you kind of started with? Um, well, we always, I, I think one of the, the things, and Robbie can touch on this too, uh, I, I always wanted to, to, to narrate it because I thought that that would just be a nice tether to the mothership, as we lovingly call supernatural. <laughs> Um, and I just thought of, it was, you know, if we could do a supernatural version of, essentially, How I Met Your Mother, and, 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 and He loves that show. Okay. Right. Look, it was on for a long time for a reason. Leave me alone. Says the guy from a 15-year show. This is true. Um, but listen, it, it, it did go through some, some different, uh, variations of a theme. I, I would say, though, it's, it's pretty much... I mean, there's some characters and so on and so forth, but they came to me with this idea that felt very, you know, exciting. And, and I, the, the, it's all the bones right there. It really is, you know, how can we tell this story from a slightly different perspective? And I, I signed up just for the chance to finally meet Jensen. And I just met him back <laughs> He's so nice. He <laughs> smells like baby Jesus. It's incredible. So Robbie, as kind of the overseer of all this, there are some concerns about maybe revisionist history or some things like, you know, 15 years of mythology, what are you doing to us here? Like, we've committed certain things to memory. I mean, honestly, when they asked about this, I, was, I asked the same question, and it was terrifying, it was exciting, and then I was like, I can't wait to be at New York Comic Con and to answer this question, to just let you guys know, like, one of the first conversations that we had, because I know everybody here is obviously a Supernatural fan, but, but so, are these, so are these two kids up here, and, and these two new kids too. And we were very clear, it was like a Hippocratic oath, do no harm. Um, we will not be rewriting, revisit, re doing any revisionism, nothing is being rebooted. Um, we are not gonna have, as Jensen likes to say, the uh, uh, Sam and Dean Polaroid from Back to the Future fading. Um, <laughs> Um, now, how no fading we, pictures. Yeah, no fading pictures. That's, yeah, that's, that's what we're like, wait a second, does this, does this fade the picture at all? That's what we ask each other. Yeah. But it was, it was actually very freeing because it gave us the opportunity to, because we're a prequel, obviously people know where the story's going, but because we're also supernatural, they could do different things. 
um, we have an opportunity to do something different. Now, what exactly we're doing uh, will be revealed in episode 13 of the Winchesters. Not today, sorry. Um, but I can assure you that I know that if people do have any concerns, I have the same concerns, and those two had them before I even showed up. Um, you know, the, the goal of this was always to not rewrite or change anything that happened in 15 seasons, and by the time we get to 13, you'll, you'll see how we did that. Oh, okay. Uh, now let's talk about our mom and dad. Uh, Drake and May. Uh, so, now that you've been on a panel, you know, uh, do you understand the immensity of these roles now? Yes. <laughs> Do you have any second thoughts now? No. <laughs> no. 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 This is this is amazing. This is incredible. Thank you all for being here. Thank you so much. Support. Hearing your guys' reaction to the pilot was like so surreal. I was bawling backstage. So thank you so much. I really appreciate it. So clearly, and we've spoken a little bit. These characters mean as much to you two as they do to the. Are you okay? <laughs> moment up here. Um, so obviously these characters mean as much to you as, as, as they do to the fans. Um, what is your take on them? What do you, how do you see them and how do you see them falling in love? Oh, uh, well, uh, as Robbie was saying, we're not trying to revise anything. So, you know, I grew up, I watched Supernatural all the way through in season 12. Um, so I have zero intention to try to live up to Jeffrey Dean Morgan's portrayal of John. Um, and more than anything, when I got the role, I just wanted to provide context. You know, John's uh, controversial uh, out there. Uh, so I just wanted to offer context um, to the character, to his life, to the you know, aspirations and dreams he had. Um, and, you know, fall in love with Mary. Uh, it's also a little benefit. Uh, but no, um, yeah, that's, that's, that's kind of where I, I came. What about you? Like, how does Mary fall, like, because she clearly sees this guy as like, he needs, he has some learning to do. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, playing Mary is so much fun because she is a very strong, um, independent woman who knows exactly what she wants and um, very badass for sure. Um, so I think with John, it kind of makes her open up. She's a little bit more vulnerable. And throughout the show, you kind of see more um, vulnerability in Mary, which I think is really beautiful. And so I'm just playing Mary. I just want to show like, you can be really tough. You can be this badass, awesome woman, but also it's okay to have sensitive and vulnerable moments as well. So that's been really fun. And I do love, I love that she is introduced as the alpha. Yeah. Like she's the alpha, and in a time where that would not have been a thing. No. You know, which I absolutely love that the, the, the point of view of Mary is the one that really sends us into this world, and we, she already has a life set up. We don't know that much about John's life at this point, other than he's going through some stuff. We don't know family, we don't know. Um, who is the voice of his dad? That would be uh, Mr. Gil McKinnon. Gil McKinnon. Very nice. Now let's talk about the Scoobies, because we get right into that as well, and I'm all aboard for this. Like, and they're all Mary's friends. Um, Lata is, so I loved her from the get-go, but I'm also a little concerned about her, because I feel like she could be corrupted. Yes, Mary is definitely scared about that for sure, too. Oh, really? Oh, so it wasn't just me. Like, I'm watching, I'm like, oh, she wants to be really a big part of this, and that could mean doing the, the wrong thing. Right? She's definitely very perceptive. Yes. <laughs> yes. And we have an amazing partner um, in Nita, who's a, just an outstanding actress and has really brought the character to life and really added stuff that I never thought about and we never talked about before we, you know, even cast. Like she just is an incredible presence. And so yes, I would be weak. I would be very worried for that sweet summer child. <laughs> Excellent. And now Ada, um, I trust that she's not just going to be your magical black character. Right? This is somebody who's going to be very, very important. Yeah, I mean, we got extremely lucky with all of our cast, but Demetria has been an amazing partner in this as well, and that's somebody who you should not also worry about. You should worry about all of these characters, because it's supernatural. <laughs> well, I, I, I'll kill them all. Like, so. Yeah, we know, what, we know what he's capable of. Yeah, guys. exactly. Um, and Carlos, I'm pretty sure Carlos is TV's first Sexually fluid hippie demon hunter. One hundred percent. 
This is incredible, um, and I love the, the energy amongst them. Are how is John? I mean, they're all super nice from the start, but he's a bit of a square. He, he is a bit of a square, and uh, Carlos is a lot. Um, you know, he takes up all the space, all of it. Um, but again, that's another a case where we have an incredible partner in JoJo, who, uh, you know, they are uh, just, an, a, again, an incredible presence that was extremely hard to cast. And I remember it was Daniil, actually, because, you know, you get tapes and there's, like, names, and you're like, who are these people? And, and I, we had, like, a text chain, and you were like, you have to see Jojo, you have to see Jojo, you have to see Jojo. And then I saw Jojo and I was like, she's correct. <laughs> she's correct. They are a huge, huge star. Yeah. I can't wait. It's going to be, it's going to be, yeah. It's going to be a lot, I've seen a lot of memes coming out of them. Oh, yes. Um, it really does rest on their shoulders. Like, it comes from the, the, the top of the family down. How has it been watching them not just assume these roles, but also assume the roles on the, like, behind the scenes? I mean, these two are amazing. You know, again, uh, you can't ask for better partners. <laughs> like, like, really, honestly, I, and everybody up here, and also our partners at the Studio Network, like, this is one of those things where you're like, I can't believe we get to, Jensen says it all the time, like, we don't have to do this, we get to do it, and to be able to do it with all these people has been amazing. Thank you so much, and you would know this also for, the, like, the behind the scenes world of Supernatural, what, there was so much love, there was so much family, there was so much connection. Are you feeling that in this production as well? Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, especially right now. Yeah, yeah. Right? It's like the whole family is together. They're here. <laughs> so I'll give you a little, uh, another little surprise, uh, which I, I don't think it's any, I mean, whatever. Um, <laughs> you're an exec producer, pal. So Let so it ride. Warner Brothers. Yeah, yeah. So here we go, here we go. Um, just touching on that, that kind of vibe uh, down down in New Orleans on set right now. Um, a, a dear friend of ours and a family member of, of, of Supernatural is directing Mr. Richard Spade. And I'm getting some like insider, just so you know, I'm getting some insider trader information on what's going on on set because I'm not there right now, I'm doing some other show. Uh, but I, I do have my I do have my ears, my ears open and Spade's been giving me some updates and um, the, res the, the reviews are just glowing. In fact, he even specifically said some stuff that you were doing, Drake, on Friday night was just blowing him out of the water. Um, and so I, I, I will say that yes, the supernatural vibe is, is still, being, uh, still being collectively curated by those that were there and know what it was originally. And that's important to all of us. So it is really, it's in the hands of those that love it the most. Correct. Yeah. Drake and Meg, have you uh, endured any of the, well, back in my days, in season two, we had to use practical effects. Like, have you heard the stories from the elder statesman? Yes. <laughs> 100%. And you're like, that's great, Pop Pop, eat your soup. That's all to Jensen. <laughs> so, um, so you gave us some strikes. Not even me strikes, the men of letters are like the Goonies, they never die. Like, these people have been around forever. Um, but the, uh, our green cooler showed up. Woo! Backseat, yeah. Um, but this Akrita, is this the big bad for the season? This is our big bad, and um, again, one of the things that, that Danielle and Jetson, uh, you know, we first talked about it was, we have 327 episodes of continuity, and um, it felt like an opportunity maybe for us to kind of uh, do something that we hadn't seen before, um, while still embracing all 327 episodes uh, warmly. Um, we have a supernatural technical consultant <laughs> um, uh, uh, who is obviously starts with these two, um, and then uh, Drake has, has watched uh, and, and has like the uh, <laughs> the actual time code I think of some of the episodes. Episode one. And then um, the supernatural wiki. I mean, you guys ever used it? Uh, Jules also uh, has been helping us out as well, which has been really uh, super cool. Um, but you know, to to answer your question though, like it, it, we. There's just people here, it's, it's handcrafted. These are people who, who love it. And what other Easter eggs could we, should we be looking for? There's a bunch in the pilot um, that, some of them are just fun, like there's a few director's names that you'll recognize yeah. in the background <laughs> and things like that. Um, uh, that's right, Kim Manners, um, uh, Mr. David Nutter, um, uh, 
I'm like the Easter Bunny, like I like to put them all in, um, but now we have this incredible crew down in New Orleans who are either have watched it or started to watch it like, oh, could you do this, could you do that? And so we're like finding other little things that we can kind of have little winks at the audience. And there's, and Robbie does such a great way of, of putting those Easter eggs in but not making them so blatant. Like when when Mary says that, that uh, they put a knife in her hand before she was old enough to hold it, was is very familiar to, uh, you know what, Dad? He, put, he gave me a 40 instead of thinking he gave me a 45. So there's there's a lot of little like kind of subtle Easter eggs too that that we uh, that are think are important, but also help really tell the story, and move it along, just the way that it did many, many, many years ago. <laughs> and should we take their um, love of coffee as a thing to work with? Is this going to be is this going to become a thing like the coffee cup or their you know the black coffee and the too sweet coffee? Coffee's the new pie. Exactly. <laughs> Yes. Just don't eat, just whatever you do, don't don't think it's gonna be fun and just take a bite of a hamburger because then that's the next 15 years of your life. <laughs> um, so obviously people, people online and in line and out in the world, they're all very curious because the original The Mothership was staffed with celestial characters who are timeless. They can go back and forth and I think the, the one that they all want to know about is starts with an a C is Chuck. Chuck. Yeah. Oh that's good. Um, oh you mean Castiel. Yeah. Right. I, I will always mean Castiel. <laughs> so I'm with you. Yeah. So what when did the emails start going out? Uh, I mean, I, I think I was campaigned for that before I even heard about this job. Um, so, you know, I've got a lot of sternly worded emails and tweets and, and texts. Um, but, you know, again, you know, Danielle and Jensen at the beginning were like, hey, like, let's establish a foundation, you know, for, for these kids. And then let's slowly bring some people in. We will be bringing a lot of familiar faces. Uh, I think we can tell, I, I'm low-key excited about the next one, um, and, um, uh, but whether or not we see Mr. Misha Collins, I, I would love it. I would love to see everybody uh, back in some way, shape, or form, and I think, um, I think we'll have an opportunity to do that, um, uh, hopefully sooner rather than later. audience questions because I want to hear from these guys because there's nothing better than watching Supernatural fans love on the Supernatural people. Yay! Woo! That's a quick cue right there. That was insta-line. All right, we're going to start over here first. Hi, everybody. I was wondering if the um, if if like the plan for the beginning of the season was always yes, on a hunting trip he hasn't been home in a few days or if there was ever like a different way you were going to start that. <laughs> I'll, I will take all the heat uh, for that. Uh, I'm guilty as charged. Um, you know, again, D Daniel and Jensen and I talked about it early on about how can we find little parallels um, between you know 1972 and 2000 whatever because we did time jumps in Supernatural, I don't remember what year it is. Oh, five. Uh, whichever it is. Um, and, and that was something that, yeah, was kind of baked in from the beginning. Um, yeah. Thank you. Of course, nice to meet you. Hello, my name is Rihanna, and I'm from New York City, obviously the greatest city in the planet. Yeah. That's right. Of course, I'd like to say, the whole John, Mary, Lana, and Carlos, they get very much Scooby in the game for me. They which is perfect. Um, but my question is, if you had to build a Mount Rushmore of Supernatural episodes, which ones would you pick and why? I mean, I, I, I'm just gonna take this up. Mystery spot from yeah. the all-time. Uh, 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 and then mystery spot, mystery spot, and then mystery spot. I just think for me it embodied, you know, what Supernatural did best, which was it had a ton of humor, I mean, uh, do these tacos taste funny to you? I probably say that 50 times a year to the sugar. It's my favorite way that Dean died. <laughs> but then it's really sad in the end, you know, and, and what, what Sam goes through, and, and, and I don't know. I'll, I'll put one of the faces on I'll throw a French mistake up there. Yeah. 
Orphan's mistake. Uh, I, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, he, he won't say this, he should, but uh, he got to, yeah. Baby, he'll have baby. It. baby. Yeah. yeah, yeah, baby, French mistake. What is it? Anything with Charlie. <laughs> Also, a fantastic choice. I don't know. Do you, do you have a favorite? favorite uh, uh, personally, I'm Dead Man's Blood. Oh, yeah. It's a good John Winchester episode. It's a good uh, help breaks loose. A little partial. And even the pilot, the pilot that set it all off. That's uh, num number one. Pilot. Um, <laughs> all right. Me. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Pau, and I'm so excited for this. It was excellent. I have a kind of serious question for Robbie and the ladies on the panel. Um, so, Robbie, you created Charlie, Eileen, and other iconic female characters, and um, whom I love. And um, I actually think that feminism in the show makes sense because of the 70s and 60s and it was really emerging then. So for the women who are awesome on the panel, what does that mean to you and how could we potentially continue to see that grow um, throughout the show? Yeah. Oh. yeah. Um, it's really important to me, I mean, to play somebody like Mary who is so badass, is so awesome, and I think me as a young girl watching it, I, I would be so happy to look up to somebody like Mary. Um, and I think throughout the show, it really shows her vulnerability and um, you really get in depth of like her experience as a woman in the 70s. Um, so I'm really excited for people to see that, and Lata as well. It really goes into her backstory. Um, so I'm, I'm really, really excited and it, it means so much to me and I'm excited for you to see it, yeah. I have the Men on Letters tattoo and yeah. I recognize it. Yes. Uh, but I do have a very serious question. Did you keep the Coach Dean outfit? <laughs> Did you, you talk about gym teacher Dean? Did I keep it? Like, like her over there. Oh, right there, yeah. Uh, no, she has it right now. <laughs> um, I believe that is tucked away somewhere. He's wearing it right now. It's underneath. Yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah. I never take it off. <laughs> Belongs in a museum. <laughs> belongs in a museum. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And just Thank before you. we go to this one, how many people in this room have a supernatural tattoo? Oh. All right. Go ahead. Hi, um, I'm Valerie. I'm also from New York City. Woo! Uh, Wendy, um, Danielle, of course, you just look amazing like Penny Lane. And I love it. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Um, my question is for Meg and Frank. Um, you guys hinted at this in various interviews and even earlier today in the panel. Um, but obviously, we have the mothership, as Jensen calls it, to inform your characters. But I'm wondering if you could maybe go in a bit deeper and tell us how you guys found Mary and John. Well, yeah. Well, uh, we obviously have the mothership. Uh, 15 years of uh, lore to go back on, so that's like an endless resource. Um, but being a fan of the show, I, I kind of was like extremely excited to play John. Just, just like I said earlier, like with how people feel towards the character, I was just excited to get to um, look at the opposite end of the spectrum as to where he ends, uh, go back to where it begins, and kind of just show the biggest transition that I could. Um, I've been kind of like paraphrasing, uh, using it as an example would be like Walter White to you know, Eisenberg. Um, I'm trying to get that kind of transition into who he is, you know, like who he wanted to be versus, you know, what Chuck or uh, Destiny had in mind for him. Yeah, and um, <clears throat> with Mary, I thought it was really cool um, to just give a lot of context of um, how she is an amazing hunter, but she really wants to get out of the life. Um, and, you know, as you um, see in the mothership, like it ends up coming back to her as well. So. Um, it's very unfortunate, but I, I think it's really awesome to see um, like how she's kind of Dean, but she's longing to be Sam, and it kind of is vice versa for John, which is really interesting. Um, so, yeah. They're being really also very sweet and humble right now, but these two kids have done an amazing job building these characters and their take on the characters. 
they're always together. And I don't know if it's like from osmosis or reverse osmosis, whatever it is, they find a way to always just bring this to another level. And, and they've just been amazing. Thank you. Go ahead. said if uh, if you guys if you guys give us an opportunity to tell more of this story I guarantee you're gonna see a lot more familiar faces style in terms of dialogue, how it was shot, how the costumes were, how everything was framed. You know, it wasn't just close-ups. You got to see characters interacting and move throughout space. So I wonder, how would you all approach, like, referencing Supernatural? Because it's very obviously in the same world, but building your own thing on top of that. You know, when we were, it was early COVID, it was like two, two, two years ago almost, to the day that we started talking about it, Jensen and Daniel would hop on the Zoom and they had this beautiful painting behind them that was like this amazing, it's like a, I wouldn't, would you call it, it's like a sun, I don't know what, it's beautiful. It's actually from 1968 and yeah. it's a, um, like just a felt sun, yeah. but orange, reds, all of the, all of those. It kind of looks like this. <laughs> And that kind of actually, strangely, became like a calling card for us when we started meeting with directors and so on and so forth. Glenn Winter, who shot the pilot, who's fantastic, really wanted to take some of the stuff that you felt, you know, in 15 seasons, particularly the earlier seasons. But then we had to find our own sort of color palette. And because we left Vancouver, which we all love, and she's in New Orleans now, it's just, it's a, literally a different sky down there. And it's and I, I'm flying back there literally right after now, and, and I hope to get there in time to see the sunset because it's just it's it's a different type of beauty, and we wanted to lean we really wanted to lean into that uh, from the visual side of things. It actually has like that sepia tone of an old photo, you know, which is perfect. Um, and also, unfortunately, uh, we have to wrap.